We do want to begin with both the NBA and the NHL as both leagues are resuming playoff games today. Players choosing not to play to draw attention to social justice issues and a show of solidarity with Black Lives Matter after Jacob Blake was shot in the back by police in Wisconsin. And today, the Bruins Lightning game opened with a call for justice. As we resume play today, the NHL and our players unite in the fight to end racism. We stand together for a common cause that needs action today, tomorrow, and well after our Stanley Cup playoffs end. In hockey, we often let our effort, determination, and passion to win do the talking. But when an issue is bigger than the game, we must speak out. Starting with three words we need to get comfortable saying. Black lives matter and again you heard it there several leagues postponing their games in solidarity with the black lives matter movement it began wednesday when the milwaukee bucks refused to play with other nba teams likely to follow suit the league postponed all of its playoff games major league baseball major league soccer and the nhl all did the same eventually and today the nba is returning after an agreement between the league and players to work together on social justice initiatives. So that is one concession, but where do the leagues actually go from here? Will they do more after these days of protests? To talk about that, we did reach out earlier today to Jashvina Shaw. She's a hockey writer from Princeton, New York. She has covered sports since 2009, writing about lacrosse, hockey, soccer, and more. And currently she covers Big Ten hockey for College Hockey News and did cover the CWHL for the Victory Press. She says the league could be doing more to tackle racism. The NHL has had a diversity inclusion program since 1996, and especially over the past few years since they um, announced hockey is for everyone, they've just proven that they haven't, they've never done anything. It's all been words and lip service, and at this point, it's just very, you can't really trust them, and I mean, like, this wasn't led by the league, it was led by the players, um, but it particularly was led by the players of color and not by their white teammates. And it's a lot of the rhetoric we're kind of hearing right now from players is the same thing we heard two months ago. It's like, OK, but we're past the time for listening and learning. So what does it say to you about systemic racism within the league then? Well, I don't think it's just an NHL problem. I think it's a hockey problem as a whole. Um, that includes the NHL, USA Hockey, Hockey Canada, Major Juniors, College Hockey, Youth Hockey, whatever you name it. And it's that it exists but they don't think that it does. And they don't see the ways in which it exists because they don't you know, recognize things like coded language, especially when you're scouting for players. Um, you know, players of color, especially black players, when scouts are you know, watching them, they have certain ways that they describe them. And even when you see things like P.K. Subban being traded, um, there was specific language used around him that would never be used for a white player. So give us, it give, us, give, an ex give us an example. What, do you, what, what are you specifically talking about? Um, like he's too flashy, um, or he's too outspoken or he doesn't gel well with the team or he doesn't listen to authority. Like th that kind of stuff is all very coded. And a lot of the racism that you see comes in that form. I mean, but also again, you know, right. We had the Dale Talon story break yesterday that he's being investigated for racist remarks. Um, so it manifests itself in that way too, but also in more subtle ways. Now, you did write an opinion piece for this uh, on Medium.com, and this was just yesterday. This is uh, in part what you wrote in your piece. You say, quote, For some reason, we're still in the stages of this weird dance where every so often the white gatekeepers of hockey grow a conscience and engage in their brand of musical chairs, where when the music stops, instead of a chair, you grab your closest black, indigenous, person of color, reporter, player, and ask them to tell you for the hundredth time how to fight racism. Now, you know, Jashvina, I want to acknowledge that you also go on to say that you're tired of answering this question. So please indulge us. For the purposes of this discussion, I apologize. I'm going to ask this question. Uh, what does the league need to do, in your opinion, to ensure its suspension of games was not just some sort of one-off, but actually leads to some kind of lasting change? I mean, they can't 
they really can't expect people like Kim Davis or the Hockey Diversity Alliance to do all the work for them. I think part of it comes from, you know, they have a lot of power and they have a lot of influence and how they, you know, a big thing is education. And it can't just be from for the young players. It has to be for the players at the top because they influence the kids who are growing up and playing right now. So the NHL has to work on educating its players and really enforcing that they understand what's happening and they understand what systematic racism is. Like it shouldn't just be on the HDA to have to talk to their white teammates about this. Um, The NHL has power, influence and money. They really need to work on breaking down barriers. And, you know, hockey is very expensive and not just in the equipment. Like the whole the whole system is completely messed up. But like, um, you know, equipment's very expensive. Ice cream is very expensive and they have that power and influence. They need to step up on that end as well. And they need to listen to the black, indigenous and people of color, fans, reporters, players who are telling them what to do and have been telling them what to do for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I'm going to ask you to connect the dot here, though, because we're talking about hockey, the NHL and other uh, leagues within the sport. But how does hockey, the changes in hockey, the kind of leadership in hockey then affect the kind of change that's being called for in greater society? That's it's actually funny you mentioned that because I had this conversation with my brother a long time ago where he was like, you're wasting your time. But I mean, hockey players are members of society. And they influence fans and they influence other people who watch the sport. And, you know, it affects, I think, how people who are not white or who are marginalized feel like myself, for example, my friends, Um, you know, hockey for us can't be an escape. And it really just adds to whatever else we already face with society. And then on the flip side, you have people who look up to these athletes and, you know, if they see them doing something and they think it's acceptable, they're just going to do it, too. And like a big thing, and I'm really thinking about this as like I research for the book that I'm co-writing, but, um, you know, hockey, hockey players interact with society. And this is a big thing when you think about something like sexual assault or domestic violence. And it's not just influencing their actions within the sport. What happens here, what they learn or what they don't learn um, influences how they act with people outside of the sport as well. Uh, and, you know, uh, hockey is, of course, very big in this country. Uh, for parents who are seeing this right now, and again, it's just not black players we're talking about. We're also talking about indigenous players, people of color, uh, women players, young girls. What can parents do, in your opinion, to improve the playing environment for all? That, that is a very tough one. Um, as we're finding out, it's very hard to figure out how to fix this because it's just such an expansive network, not only in Canada, but in the U.S. as well. And when you factor in all the different leagues and all the different paths. But a big thing is that parents have to be willing to put in the work to check each other. Because if kids even are being educated to not be racist or to understand what systemic racism is, if their parents are at home and they tell them, you know, this you shouldn't be talking about black lives matter the kids are not going to talk about it and the kids you know if they hear their parents using racial slurs they're going to do the same thing so i think parents really have to sort of hold each other accountable because otherwise it's you know playing hockey already takes so much time from the parents that it's hard to invest them or to make them care or to do extra education so it really comes down to them monitoring each other and our thanks there to hockey writer Jashvina Shaw. She spoke to us earlier today from Princeton, New Jersey.